Out of the companies that watch enthusiasts love to hate, Invicta is at the top of that list. And there are some very justifiable reasons for that. But out of all Invicta watches, there is one that is often recommended as a good buy. In fact, it's a watch that even the most committed of Invicta haters will actually tolerate. It's the Invicta Pro Diver, specifically the automatic version with the Seiko NH35A movement in it. And what makes this watch such a good value is that if you wanted an actual Seiko with that same movement, you'd look at spending at least twice as much. Now what makes this watch even more interesting for bargain hunters is that it usually goes on sale a couple of times a year, especially right around Black Friday, at which point the price is a lot closer to 50. In fact, last June, I picked up this one for 43, which is an amazing price, especially when you consider that the movement itself can sell for that much. So this makes the Pro Diver a very popular choice for gifts, as well as a great starting point for modders. So with the holidays coming up and Black Friday right on the horizon, I figured it's a good time to take a look at the Pro Diver to see if it's actually worth your time and money. There are a lot of versions of the Pro Diver, but the three that I see most often are these, the black, blue, and blue with rose gold. And if you're starting to shop and look at these, just make sure you're looking at the automatic version with the Seiko movement and not a quartz. But you can easily identify the Seiko ones with their custom rotor. Now, with regard to the case, this is a straight-up Rolex Submariner homage, with the exception of the Invicta engraving on the side, which honestly just confuses me by its pure existence. Why is it there? No one can read it while it's on your wrist, and honestly, no one really cares that it's an Invicta. Regardless, the finishing is okay, on par for the price. The steel is brushed on top and polished as it goes to the sides. The right angle as the side turns into the back is a little sharp, but it's not too bad. The crown is at the three, and it is a signed screw down crown. It unscrews nicely and is a decent size. Dimension wise, the watch is sitting at 40 millimeters, but 44 millimeters including the crown. Lug to lug is a short 47, and it's almost 14 millimeters tall, not counting the Cyclops. With, it's closer to 15, which is average for a diver. Lug width is 20, and it does weigh a respectable 145 grams. And also, it's listed at 200 meters of water resistance. But it is important to note that it's not a certified diver like a Seiko SKX. The bezel is also steel with a coin edge. It's decent, with Maybe a little bit of play to it, but overall it's okay. It should be 120 click unidirectional, and the sounds pretty decent. But regardless, it looks brilliant with that blue metallic insert, which I assume is aluminum, which has a little loom pip at the top. The crystal is mineral, and it's flat and sticks out just slightly above the bezel. And the Cyclops sticks out just a little beyond that. While I know a Cyclops is in the style of a subby, generally speaking, I'm just not a fan of them. While it's nice that they help magnify the date, I just don't like how they stick out. But it is fairly easy and common to remove them from these. Below that we have the dial, which is a brilliant metallic reflective blue finishing. The hour indicators are nicely applied, with a silver outlined and raised loom white center. Overall though, I think they are a little on the small side, but not too much. The Invicta logo in the middle is also applied, but everything else is painted on. The Mercedes hour and minute hands are all standard stuff here, but the second hand is something that's a little different, where the back of it is just another Invicta logo. But I like the logo on the second hand. It's different and kind of fun to watch as it goes around. But the loom pip on the other end is maybe a little too close to the end. If it was moved back maybe a millimeter, I think it would make it look a lot more balanced. A smaller date window is at the three, and it's a simple cutout. But with the Cyclops, it's not very noticeable, as with the magnification, all you can see is the date. Generally, I'm not a big fan of subbies, but overall, the dial here is nicely executed, and the blue coloring looks fantastic. 
especially for the price. Now loom is an area where this watch falls a little short. It's not bad, just okay. Which on a diver, you normally want a little better. It can't stand up to a Seiko diver, but I'd say it's on par with a Vostok Amphibia. Turning the watch over, you can see the screw-down exhibition case back. The crystal is a little small here, but you can easily see the Seiko NH35A movement, which is equivalent to a Seiko 4R35 movement. So standard beat rate, 40-ish hour power reserve, plus hacking and hand winding. And as I said earlier, you can identify the Invictas that have this by seeing their custom rotor. Now out of the box accuracy on this one is pretty good. It sits at losing about one and a half seconds a day, which is nothing to complain about here. And again, very excellent for the price. Although accuracy will vary watch to watch. The bracelet it comes with is decent as well. Solid links and a two-tone steel finish. The edges are a touch sharp, but nothing to be overly concerned with. But the real downfall here is the clasp, which unfortunately is not a push button clasp. The metal seems thinner and the finishing is nowhere near as good as the rest of the bracelet. It just feels like something that will be scratched up in no time. As well as the edges of the clasp are a bit too sharp for my taste. It doesn't ruin the bracelet, but it's not really doing it any favors either. All in all, I'd say the bracelet is okay, but it should serve you fine for a while. But if you don't like it, there are plenty of other options to swap it out to. My initial impression is that while the watch looked good on my wrist, the dial itself seemed to be a, a little small. But that's mostly because I've been wearing some larger divers over the last few months. But after wearing it for a little while, I got reused to wearing a 40mm again and didn't think twice about the dial again. And the watch is rather comfortable to wear. While the case back looks a little tall, that also elevates the watch just a little bit, so that only a smaller footprint is in contact with your wrist. And that blue dial just looks brilliant, especially in the sun. After spending some time with this one, I'm not sure why anyone would want a black version. There are really three reasons to be looking at getting an Invicta Pro Diver. Their first is for bargain hunters, who are looking for an affordable watch with great specs, either for themselves or as a present. The second is someone who wants a decent sub homage without spending a lot of money. And on that front, I'd say that this might be the best one for under $100. And the third is for someone who is looking for a great starting point for a mod project. Either way, you can't go wrong here. Overall, the Pro Diver is a nice little package for the price, especially when it's on sale, even with the side branding. Invicta's design choices here won't please everyone, but there's no denying that the Pro Diver is a good value at its regular price and an incredible deal at its sale price. But the question for me is, would I ever actually buy one for myself? And if I'm being honest, the answer is no. But that's more because I'm not really interested in subby homages. Which is one of the reasons I like the Orient Mako 2. While it looks similar, the different dial is just more interesting to me. But as usual, let me know in the comments what you think about the Invicta Pro Diver, or if there are any other Invictas you think are worth taking a look at. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for joining me.